So part three, now that we understand what it is to be a competent or flexible intercultural communicator, we're going to look at how, how it's possible to actually, yeah, they use the word practice, how, how to be this. And they use, for they first want to explain how we can get to the, the how we can get to the point where we are very mindful of what goes into intercultural communication and they use a staircase okay it, it's all right let me let me go through this first all right at the very first stage people are at the unconscious incompetent stage this is where you don't know that you don't know things and so you just you are acting the way that you were brought up to maybe and you are potentially you're not communicating well with others or you are um in, insulting them but it, you don't even know it okay you just kind of blunder maybe somebody says something to you and you realize oh my goodness i i am not really communicating very competently so you move up to the conscious incompetence stage where you are you notice that that you are having problems communicating with people and you 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 don't yet potentially have the knowledge or the skills to change that so it's interesting they even though they come up with this four stages they they have kind of an intermediate where you're, you're conscious of the fact that you don't really, you're not communicating well. Uh, and so you're, you're, you're it's, like it's a half step up to being a conscious, competent communicator. <laughs> so at, at this stage, you, you, you have acquired some knowledge and you are, you are very mindful of, of what you're doing. Oh, uh, now I am. I'm moving into a, a, this, this school, this business, this neighborhood. I've gone overseas. I'm interacting with these people. And here's what I know about the culture. Here's what I know about how people in this culture communicate. Ideally, although for a lot of people this doesn't happen, you move to the final stage, which is unconscious competence. So you you are fully at home in another culture and so you are able to interact with people in this culture without even thinking about it they use the the term code switching which uh it's basically uh when you're in one situation you you speak your your words and your nonverbals fit you into that that culture and then when you move to a um, another you you just it's like you, you just turn on a switch and you, you can interact um, appropriately with it within that culture. <clears throat> a lot of, you're probably not aware of it, but you, you do this. Just think about potentially the way that you interact with your grandma or some other elderly relative. It's probably not the same way you act with people at work or, or friends of yours. Okay. So you're, 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 you're code switching when you move from one situation to the next. They say there, there can be issues with the unconscious competence stage, because if you move to a culture that you're not familiar with, you, you might actually be at the bottom again with that new culture. You, because you're so used to, they, they give the example of, of being in Spain. You're so used to how you, you don't salt things. And then you go to Japan and you're not salting it. And um, there are rules to how you're supposed to dip sushi in soy sauce before eating. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm um, pretty good example there. <clears throat> I think it's important, you, you know, they, the way they have the arrows going up as if it's, it's smoothly from one stage to the next. And I suspect there might be some back and forth thing like you you don't know what you're, you're doing things wrong then you realize uh oh i'm doing things wrong and so then you are working on it but then you realize that there are you you learn new things about 
the culture that you can't do well, so you're back to the conscious incompetent state. So just realize that it's not, it's not smooth necessarily. And then they want to end this section on <clears throat> encouraging us to, to be mindful. Oh, I forgot. The last stage they, they call mindlessly mindful. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure about that one, but if you are trying, you're being conscious of this. Okay. And so what this, this slide is looking at things that can cause problems for people or why we might not be able to be very mindful because people don't know that identity is closely connected to how our culture conditions us to act. Okay. It's, it's un conscious. I think I keep, I probably say this every single class that I teach. We don't know necessarily what the rules are until someone breaks them. Okay. <clears throat> and if you, if you are going along with your unconscious cultural conditioning, and then you, you see someone who's a little bit different, you, you, you're reactive. You, you judge someone based on the values that you have learned, the way your family has brought you up and and your uh your as i say your lived experience now when i say you judge someone it doesn't mean necessarily that you go out and then you throw eggs at their house it's just kind of a almost an unconscious what do they call it a knee-jerk reaction where you think well that was weird well that was wrong that's odd it doesn't mean you have to act on it okay because People frequently say, oh, I do, I'm, I'm not judgy at all. And I think all of us are. It's, it's do we then question those judgments? Okay. These, these reactive or snapshot evaluations, and you're saying, well, this is bizarre. Frequently, not always. They're based on ignorance because we don't know about the people. Fear. We, human beings tend to not be terribly thrilled with something that's new. Um, presumptions that we have made and the stereotypes that come from pop culture, from that surface sources. Oh, well, you, you know that. Um, I had a, um, a friend of mine, well, someone I knew as a Peace Corps volunteer said when he had told his parents he was going to be going to West Africa, his mother said, oh, be careful about African women. You know, they like bright colors. We never quite figured out what that was supposed to mean. But obviously she had some, his mom had, was, was expecting certain bizarre behaviors based on probably pictures she had seen in National Geographic. Okay. And if we don't move beyond that surface source, if we're looking at the stereotypic images, we don't have authentic and accurate knowledge. And what, what that happens is this inaccurate data creates more distance psychological distance between us and the people from a different group. Now here are the shoulds. <laughs> if we want to truly be mindful about intercultural communication, we have to try as hard as we can to see things through another person's cultural lens and, and their identity. I like the word complexity. You know, what, is this, what do they say? Uh, walk a mile in somebody's shoes before you judge someone walk a mile in their shoes really try to see the world from their perspective this part of this is empathy <clears throat> and don't stay at the surface level begin to increase your knowledge and, and understanding of what's what's at that deep level of the iceberg the beliefs the values the norms and the reasons for these behaviors this can take a long time because people are not always willing to share this information if they think that you are just being nosy and you're not and you're not um, truly interested in learning. Okay, um, it's also important to remember that people are not simple; their identity is is multidimensional. And the more that we can realize that uh, it's, you know, we, we see someone and they are not a representative of their, necessarily of, of their culture um, or their gender 
or their race. <clears throat> we'll, we can talk a little bit later about those concepts too. Um, the, the textbook uses the word humble an awful lot, okay? Um, that you should, you should kind of, you want, should want to learn because you realize that you do have a lot to learn. So you want to, you, you should be learning, observing, discovering, and then wanting to understand some more. And then this quote is not in the textbook, but it is in the instructor's manual. And I thought it was really interesting. There's a, a famous anthropologist by the name of Clyde Cluckhone. And he said, every human is like all other humans, some other humans and no other human. Okay, so remember that you, you, you meet someone and you say, wow, you know, human beings are all the same. And then you say, well, you know what? Some people are similar and some people are dissimilar. And then ultimately also everyone is an individual. So here's the, 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 how you can really can get to that that last uh, step in the staircase of being um, unconsciously well I guess it would be the third step being consciously competent and once you are you know you've done all this mindfulness hopefully you can slide into the mindlessly mindful still don't like that but I that's all I got right now <laughs>